In 1908, the roar of a peculiar, almost sci-fi machine echoed in the cobblestone streets. It was Henry Ford's Model T, the first mass-produced car, an invention that forever transformed transportation itself. Yet, as Model Ts began cruising through city avenues, skeptics cast dubious glances from their horse-drawn carriages. What would they have said about cars now? Well, let's find out. Please raise your hand if you came here in a car. <laughs> I think it's quite clear what they would have thought. And it wasn't just Ford. Skeptics doubted the appearance of the plane, the bicycle, the laptop, <laughs> even the cheeseburger. Though these inventions were initially met with suspicion, today, not only do we see airplanes crisscrossing our skies, bicycles cruising our streets, laptops filing our homes, yes, cheeseburgers blessing our bellies, but also automobiles enabling our lives. Now, the way I and other optimists see it, we stand at the cusp of another once-in-a-century revolution, artificial intelligence. This, I believe, is our era's car or plane, the once-in-a-century invention that's set to revolutionize our lives and the, those of generations to come. Sundar Pichai, the current CEO of Google, goes so far as to say that AI is the most crucial invention since fire. But there's a wide misconception about AI. We have a tendency to reduce the vast field to ChatGPT, a novel chatbot that's become the poster child of generative AI. Because of this reduction, we frequently forget the other effects of AI which are even greater breakthroughs. AI algorithms are helping doctors diagnose at unprecedented levels of accuracy. Bankers using AI lend to more people than ever before. Manufacturers are making production lines ever more efficient. Meteorologists are predicting natural disasters with unseen precision, all with the help of AI. And there's so much more. Take a team of MIT researchers, for example. They took an unprecedented step in modern medicine. Rather than sitting down and examining the data, they developed an AI algorithm to sift through chemical structures to identify the perfect chemical compound for their superbug. And in a matter of hours, they found the perfect chemical compound and discovered their new antibiotic, Abacin. Times have changed. After the novel experiment, MIT computer scientist Dr. Regina Barsley commented, that if finding new drugs is like searching for a needle in a haystack, AI acts like a metal detector. AI is to us what the microscope was to scientists originally studying the cell. During COVID, I observed my younger brother struggling to adapt to online learning. Diving deeper, I learned that children worldwide lost over a year of learning, some up to two years. And according to UNICEF, some children will see lifelong effects from this viral outburst. One way or another, I wanted to help. I realized that by leveraging AI, we can help students make back lost time quicker and more effectively. So I put together a band of my friends, and we began developing a machine learning algorithm that quantitatively matches students and educators on the basis of learning and teaching style. This meant the birth of TutorLink AI. Today, TutorLink's algorithms quantitatively pair students and educators on the basis of teaching learning style compatibility, personality, performance, and interests. Just with the progress we've made, we see a future where education-related inequities can be a thing of the past. But despite all the progress and projected growth, a looming hurdle remains. In May of 2023, Reuters reported that 61% of Americans perceive AI as a threat. Without first understanding the technology and to a certain degree embracing it, we can expect no growth, no progress, no impact. To take the next step for humanity, as 20th century Americans did with Ford's Model T, we must demystify any doubt foster genuine trust, and adopt willful optimism surrounding the technology. To do so, we'll start by breaking down how AI actually works. 
AI boils down to the analysis of data, nothing more, from a child learning to clean their room to an adult decoding the nuance in a novel. Our brains evolve in loops of observation, interpretation, and conclusion. We receive input data, process its meaning, and make a decision with respect to that information. One of the most commonly used models in AI development is called the neural network, which is remarkably similar to this organic process. Designed to mimic the human brain, AI's neural network consists of interconnected nodes, or neurons we call them, that process and transmit data. These nodes serve as channels that analyze the data and help the AI reach the best conclusion. As data passes through them, these nodes compare it to past data, or their desired outcome, and make a conclusion, yielding an output value. Returning to the child's messy room, AI works similarly where it makes adjustments after every conclusion so that its nodes become more precise in interpreting data. So it's safe to say that as children learn lessons by being rewarded and getting in trouble, AI increases its accuracy by nailing and screwing up conclusions. It's just like a child learning lessons from their parents. In reality, the nebulous mechanics of AI boil down to these nodes' interpretation of data. That's it. Take the hummingbird for example. The AI receives colored pixels as an input, interprets certain traits in the hidden layers, and performs the categorical task of determining the animal. In its hidden layers, which are the most critical ones, the AI sifts through a number of key traits, which can range from shape, color, size, etc., via its decision trees to make a conclusion. It's all just a series of mathematical operations that specialize in producing an intended output value. There's not much more to it. My data science teacher, Mr. Felipe, says that, like doing homework, taking a test, or writing a research paper, AI learns differently from different types of data. And there are three key types. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. The first kind, supervised learning, it's kind of like doing homework. You have your answers and you have access to the answer key. Well, oftentimes. Supervised learning is grounded in an input-output environment. Think of a student in school being taught one thing from the next. Fact and myth, right and wrong, and true and false. One of the early examples of supervised learning is an early emerging chess AI model, which was fed countless hours of historical chess games. Here, the engine was informed of each blunder and genius move, where it learned not just the rules, but the strategies, defenses, and secrets of chess. The second kind of neural network is a little bit more complex than its former counterpart. This one's called unsupervised learning, and it's kind of like taking a test. You have your answers, but you don't have access to the answer key. Given only the instructions of chess, a separate unsupervised learning model was given just a chessboard, its pieces, and some steadfast resilience. IBM's Deep Blue, learning solely through trial and error, was armed with just the elementary instructions of chess and emerged victorious against the world champion, Garry Kasparov. When we humans learn chess, we get two things to guide us towards mastery. The game's base level instructions and a hyper-competitive parent. <laughs> Similar to this approach, Deep Blue was provided with just the game's instructions, illustrating the considerable rate at which AI can learn. And lastly, there's reinforcement learning, the most pure manifestation of machine learning. Here, the AI is provided with a reward for achieving or nearing its target, while being granted the ultimate freedom of exploring its own approaches and solutions, kind of like writing a research paper. Provided little to no boundaries, MIT's robotic dog is a fascinating example. This bionic canine wasn't explicitly taught to gallop over distances or navigate terrains. Researchers built the canine prototype and placed it on the ground. Squirming and flipping and writhing, the cyborg dog slowly began learning which joint movements were the most efficient. And in a matter of minutes, the dog learned how to trot with style. 
by realizing which movements yielded the best results relative to its objective, which was traveling from point A to B as quick as possible, the dog slowly but surely began optimizing its movements to maximize efficiency. Despite having insufficient data, AI can make wildly accurate predictions. Often in the real world, some of the hardest jobs require us to take positions without having the whole story. For example, during a World Cup final, a manager has to make the right decision. And he doesn't have enough data to certify his call. I mean, the reason he's paid is because of his expert ability to make judgment in turbulent, unclear moments. His expert ability has been molded over years of data, games, practices, etc. So now I ask you all a question. How helpful would a tool whose specialization is making conclusions with insufficient data be for someone whose central responsibility is making decisions in unclear moments? Pretty helpful. For the sake of examining how AI really is this once-in-a-century invention of our time, it's helpful to examine a real-world example, one that helps humanity extend further than its physical wingspan. Take Tutorlink, the algorithm I mentioned earlier. Students, upon joining the platform, provide Tutorlink with information regarding their learning style, interests, personality traits, and performance. Tutors do the same. This rich data forms the basis for Tutorlink's tutor-student pairings. Arriving at the conclusion that it does, Tutorlink's AI performs a feat that not even the most expert of researchers could replicate. After learning about my experience with AI, you might now understand why those AI dystopian Hollywood depictions, from Marvel's Ultron to the Terminator, just sound like a dry, bland plot. How have we gone from Darth Vader's, Jokers, and Voldemort's to vilifying a series of mathematical operations? But the problem is that most people actually believe that these mathematical operations are as sinister as Darth Vader and his galactic empire. We have trouble placing trust in this technology. And as I mentioned before, AI algorithms are helping doctors diagnose at unprecedented, unprecedented levels of accuracy. It's literally saving lives. We need to start seeing its potential when used for the right reasons. The goal here isn't to create the matrix. Instead, we aim for coexistence where AI can help us achieve feats otherwise not thought possible. When da Vinci sketched his futile flying machine, or when Ford conceived of his Model T, there were doubters. But as history shows, progress is for the bold and the visionary, for those that dare believe. As we embrace this, this new era, let's remember that the story we write together with AI can be far grander and more inspiring if we embrace these advanced technologies. So in 2108, when they look back at the marvel of AI, let's choose to be remembered as those who dared believe. Thank you.